Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Gold Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and today we are taking a look. I know it seems like the wound is still really open, but we need to talk about what the Maple Leafs can potentially do this offseason to fix some of the team's problems. This is not going to fix everything. There is a lot of speculation. I am, I'm not using this just as a clickbait. I genuinely think this is an option for the Leafs this season because in years past, it was always, well, we're sticking with the core and making little tweaks here and there. I don't think that's going to work. And I think Brad Tree Living wants to put his mark on this team. And these rumors, I think, are probably going to be relevant by the time the trade deadline open, right? The trade, uh, the window to make trades opens again, and potentially in free agency, this all seems pretty much on brand with what the Leafs could do here. So I want to preface that it is speculation. People will complain this is clickbait, but I, this is genuine. I genuinely think these are options for the Leafs, and they have been in the past, so why couldn't they be today? So there's three players that I think that the Maple Leafs should really target this summer. And I want to preface that the Maple Leafs have $18.5 million in cap space this summer. Now, that's before they try to sign Max Domi, Tyler Bertuzzi, some of these other guys that are pending UFAs for the Leafs. So take with this what you will. Noah Gregor, TJ Brody, Mark Giordano, Ilya Vushkin, and Ilya Samsonov. All those guys have to be re-signed or let go. Same thing with Lilligren, Robertson, and Connor Dewar. So all of those guys make up potentially what could be eaten up out of $18.5 million. So let's say, hypothetically, they let everybody go. Or even if they don't, some of those guys, right, like they're not going to cost you that much money. A lot of those guys are probably going to be similar to the salary they have now, which isn't much. The big difference between the Bruins la or the Leafs last season and this season, that Jake Muzzin money comes off the books. And that's huge. That's a huge amount of the salary cap space that the Leafs now have. Now... Another thing, the Leafs like to spend over the salary cap. At this point, everyone complains about Vegas with the, L with the LTIR and all this and that. With Jake Muzzin on the books, the Leafs have the most expensive roster in the National Hockey League. So we know that money isn't as big of an issue as long as they can circumvent the salary cap. They can make it work, okay? So... There's three players. They're in the thumbnail of the video. You might know them. You might not know them. There's reasons why the Leafs could bring these guys in. How they get there is a different avenue. But let's just say $18.5 million, okay? Now, you factor in no money coming back the other way. If they were hypothetically to trade Mitch Marner, which everybody's already basically saying he is traded, Mitch Marner off the books would be $29.4 million of cap space right now for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So if that is indeed the case, or John Tavares, or maybe both, but we're just going with one of those salaries, right? That big money salary almost puts them at $30 million before signing any of their current non, uh, any of their UFAs or RFAs, okay? So that's where the money comes from, because immediately people are gonna say, Kevin, how do the Leafs get the money to bring any of these guys in? That's how you get the money. It is possible. The first one is an RFA, and this one's the most complicated because of the money and the situation that it would have to involve, because I think this would have to be a three-team trade. So the Vegas Golden Knights, they are still in the playoffs. They're still worried about winning a cup right now. But this summer, their salary cap is going to be very much strained. And the fact that they just signed... Um, who did they just sign? Was it Noah Hannafin? Whatever defenseman they just brought into the trade deadline, I want to say it's Hannafin. They just locked them up long term, which means they might not have the money for Nick Haig. Nick Haig is an RFA this summer. He's 24, 25 years old, and I truly believe that's a guy that the Toronto Maple Leafs should be looking at. Now, you might be saying, well, Kevin, why would the Golden Knights trade him? It's, a it's actually obvious, the money. If they don't have the money to re-sign him, they're going to let him go. And we know the Golden Knights don't care if they're willing to make the cutthroat, difficult decision like that. They're willing to do it. Now, money-wise, you could find a way where you can make some kind of trade for assets. Now, it might suck. It might involve some of the younger players. Like It's going to have to involve some combination of Matthew Nyes or Robertson or one of the young defensemen. I know, it sucks. You don't want to hear that. But if the Leafs are determined to win the Stanley Cup right now, that is going to be the price. I'm sorry. 
you you don't have the draft picks. You don't have your first round pick next year. You don't have your second, third, or fourth round pick for the next two or three years. The only thing they have is this year's first round pick. So I assume that's got to go in the deal. So you trade this year's first round pick, one of Robertson or Nyes or one of those guys, and you find a third team to maybe take Mitch Marner. And then you have to do something like that. Or if you want to do a straight up trade, because I don't think Vegas is taking back Marner in this deal. Otherwise, they would just, why would they trade Nick Hague? If they have the money, they don't have the money to take on Marner. So Marner would have to be found out in another deal somewhere. But I think they could get Nick Hague here. Now, like I said, there's a lot involved. There's a lot of complications there. Money would have to come out some way or the other, but it could work. And yeah, I know, it sucks. You're going to have to lose a good prospect. Your only real value of a pick in this year's draft, yeah, that sucks, but it is what it is. That's kind of where you're at right now. So Nick Hague would be the first guy I would look at. So let's say they can't make the deal work for Nick Hague, or there's somebody in free agency. That makes this way less complicated. You just throw a bunch of money at the guy, and he comes in. And that's where I look at Carolina Hurricanes defenseman Brett Pesci. Carolina is not going to have the cap space to re-sign Pesci. He's going to hit the open market. Now, what's good here and bad at the same time is he's injured right now. So he is injured and not playing for the Hurricanes in their playoff run, which automatically should concern Lee fans because of what they just dealt with Jake Muzzin. He's an injured defenseman that we can't guarantee he's on the books. Well, worst case scenario, if he's hurt, well, then he goes to the LTIR, and the Leafs still have the money to do something with that. They can bring in another player to do that. And it's not costing you draft capital. So there is a scenario where that could work. And he might actually come in a little bit cheaper because he's not playing right now in the playoffs. Depending on how things go the rest of the way, depending on how far Carolina goes, maybe he plays, maybe he doesn't play in the Stanley Cup playoffs this year. But I think that's a guy that Carolina could tar uh, Toronto should target as a offensive defenseman because Morgan Riley didn't really get it done this year. That would be a guy I would look at that is a puck moving. He can be a puck moving defenseman and he's reliable in his own end. I would look at Brett Pesci as a really interesting candidate there. I know he's under the Brendan Moore system, so maybe he plays better because he's under Brendan Moore's system and under Carolina's defense, so he plays better than maybe he really is. But I think Toronto should be willing to take that risk, especially if it means not trading one of Robertson, Nyes, or your first round pick next year or this year. That might be worth the risk. And ultimately, this leads to number three. The third guy on my list that I don't know how you get it done. I don't know where it gets done. It probably means Marner has to go out the door just so there's a spot in the lineup for this guy to come in. Steven Stamkos. He's from Tampa Bay. He's played in Toronto in terms of his youth. He's been with the Tampa Bay Lightning forever. Depending on what happens there, I truly think he's going to go back to Tampa. But if he does not, you would be dumb to believe he wouldn't consider going back to Toronto. And I think things have to change there, which might be one of those being Stamkos coming in. That's a tremendous amount of pressure for Stamkos. He plays really well with the Lightning. His production has gone down significantly, so if Lee fans are expecting 50 goal seasons from Stamkos, you might want to hedge your bets there. But with desperate times comes desperate measures. If he wants to go to Toronto, the name alone, all that stuff combined, I think the Leafs should consider it. And I think I'm going to do this in another video, but I'll give you guys kind of a sneak peek to another video in terms of an entire offseason of what I think the Leafs will do. I'm actually asking you guys um, what you guys think I should do in terms of what should the Leafs do this summer? Should they fire everybody? And maybe by the time this video goes out, all that stuff is already done, so I'm not even really including that in this video. But I think that we need to see if there's a way the Leafs can make some changes. I would like to see one more I would like to see one more top 4 defenseman come in. I would like to see a top 6 forward come in and they need to get a goaltender. So with all those things with 18 and a half million right now, potentially up to 30 million if they trade Marner and I think that is going to be a factor in this, the Leafs can make some moves here. And it, like I said, it's not going to be pretty. Nothing is sacred on this team in my opinion. I think Matthews I think Matthews, Nylander, 
and Nyes would be the guys I would say are untouchable, but even that, I don't know if Nyes is untouchable. If they need to bring in or acquire a defenseman, it might come at the cost of one of those younger players that's been playing well. Or maybe a Nick Aperzizi or one of the other guys that could be available down with the Marlies. It, it is what it is, but that's what I think the Leafs need to do here. And, you know, kind of as another candidate, a former, you know, guy that grew up in Toronto, hometown boy from Toronto, Drew Doughty. What would it take to get Drew Doughty here? That could be a really interesting conversation. I just don't know where that lies in terms of the salary. I think his salary is going to be difficult for the Leafs to bring in. And the perception, I think, if, if Stamkos comes in, it's basically, in terms of for free, it's just taking up salary cap space. For Doughty, it's going to cost you the salary cap space and also um, the assets to acquire him. It's not going to be cheap because... The LA Kings see him as a core player to that team. He's not the same player he was, but they're not going to trade him for peanuts or pucks. You're going to need to trade up, and I just don't know if the Leafs have the assets to trade up for a guy, even like Drew Doughty, who is on the decline of his career. And you know, looking at it, in all honesty, if I'm Brad Tree Living, that might not be great asset management going out to acquire a Drew Doughty. So, like I said, I'm going to leave the video here, guys. If you like this content, want to see more videos like this, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Hopefully, I've been able to at least defend my reasons for why I think these three players would be at least suitable options for the Maple Leafs this summer, but I'd love to know what you guys think down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.